It amazes me that even after hitting max level and playing this game for as long as I have, I can still learn new things almost every day or get a better understanding about things I already knew. So I figured I'd share 10 helpful tips that I've learned as I've played Top War. You'll also wanna make sure that you stay all the way until tip number 10 because that one could potentially be a game changer in any kind of SVS or Eternal Lands event. Starting things off at number one is your energy can actually be refunded when you attack Dark Forces. If you go ahead and do a times five attack or even a single attack, you'll see my energy goes from 25 to zero. And if I pull this march before it makes contact, I get all 25 energy back. This can even work if you've already made contact with the Dark Force. Whenever you attack a Dark Force doing a times five attack, you will take out a Dark Force the moment that you hit it, and then you take out another Dark Force every one minute afterwards. However, if you recall partway through these battle, you'll get a proportionate amount of energy back. So I've taken out one of the five Dark Forces, so if I recall, I get 20 energy back. Moving on to number two, most things on the map can be bookmarked. Dark forces, warhammers, resources, even other players. When you click on them, you'll notice a green star in the upper right hand corner. If you click that, you can go ahead and bookmark these under default friend or rival. We'll go ahead and bookmark this guy under friend. We can click to a different area of the map and you can go back to that location by hitting that same green star at the bottom of your screen next to your coordinates. Click that and you can see all three different categories and when you click on the person or object that you bookmarked, you can go back to that same location. Keep in mind, if this player were to move or say a dark force or resource were to despawn or be killed, the bookmark will still show them at that location, it will not follow them. So you cannot bookmark other players and follow them everywhere. But this is still a helpful way to save certain locations. Number three is treasure guard stores. You can click the top banner of the hunting guild, go to world treasure and treasure stores, and you can find other treasure stores that other players have opened as well as your own. After a player opens a treasure store, one minute later, it becomes available to anybody in that server and you can click on them to find any objects that they didn't purchase out of those. And you can find heroes in here for generally 200 gems, but you can find heroes and class items for as cheap as 100 gems if you're lucky. Before we move on to tip number four, which has helped me get over 500% gold production, I have a huge announcement to share with everybody. I will actually be starting a second YouTube channel, bringing you all the latest in news, release dates, and events in the video game world. And if that's something you're interested in, please follow me on my social medias, all of which can be found in the description below. But tip number four is to never merge your gold production increases unless you have run out of heroes to put them on and then merge them all evenly. Make sure to put a rare and common gold production on all of your heroes and you will boost your gold production through the roof. Tip number five on this list is if you have to buy gems, make sure you buy the super lucky gem bag. Here you can get a minimum of 600 gems, but as many as 3000 gems for the same price as the 300 gem pack. So not only are you guaranteed double gems, but you could get as many as 10 times that amount. Moving on to tip number six is the research where we are able to get skills for our heroes. If you do the times 10, you are guaranteed to at least get an exclusive hero skill shard or their entire skill. However, this is only for the free heroes. So if you want to level up the exclusive of your free heroes, make sure you're only doing the times 10. But if you don't want those and instead you'd want rare and common skills, maybe only do the times one so you'd be less likely to get their exclusive skills and instead get more common and rare skills. Coming in at number seven is an organizational tip for your freeway tiles and your purple tiles. These are such a pain to manage because there's just so many of them. However, something that can make your life easier is if you get 100 of these, you can put them in a 10 by 10 square, and then from there, they're very easy to manage. On one side, I have all my level threes, and the other side, I have all my level twos. Once I have enough to level one of my tiles up, I simply pick it up, merge it in my inventory, and then move it over to the side with the level threes. And then I can just keep doing this until I run out of tiles and then just do it all again, except in reverse. This way I can always look at my tiles and see exactly how many I have at what level. So for example, this side is my level twos, and since I know they're in a 10 by 10 formation, I have 14 level twos and the rest are level threes. Another benefit to this is as you're doing this, to level these up, you only need one tile exposed, so you don't have to pick up a ton of units. All I have to do is pick up my level two, move it over to the level three side, and then move over a unit, and then I can work on my next tile. Number eight on this list is that notification banner that's always scrolling across your screen, usually giving you information you don't care about. You can actually get rid of that by going into your settings. And the fourth option from the top is the notification banner setting, and here you can toggle it on or off. Nearing the end of the list at number nine is saving your guild task puzzle pieces 
to save energy. These are very important to do and they give you lots of good rewards. However, there's a time and place to do them. If you're in Eternal Lands or maybe there's a Throb event going on or an event that has you taking out Dark Forces, hold on to those puzzle pieces. There's no rush, they're not going anywhere. Maybe do those when there's an event going on that doesn't need all your VIT. That way you can save and not have to take out those treasure guards which cost 10 energy apiece to attack. Finally, we get to number 10, which is potentially game-changing in any fight. But if you found this video useful or helpful, please don't forget to drop a like. Really helps out the channel. But number 10 on this list is hiding behind the Shadow Dragon base. This is the most effective base to conceal either your base or even a Mechanical Master's Tower. Here, the base is tall enough that you can actually hide behind it, and you can see that my weakening facility is largely covered by this. And if you look closely, sure, you can see it. But if you're in the middle of a fight and you're scrolling around this is something that's very difficult to see and can easily go unnoticed. So if you have an enemy or an ally that has the Shadow Dragon base, you can go ahead and try and build behind them. There's been many a time that we have built a weakening facility behind the Shadow Dragon and it went unnoticed, allowing us to build the thing entirely without having to defend it. You can also do this with the small base and you can hide behind it with the default base. However, the name does overlap with the base skin on, on top, so it is a little bit easier to notice, but it is still something that could potentially go unnoticed by your enemy and could change the fight. That's all the tips I have for today's video. Which one did you guys find the most helpful? Let me know in the comments below and maybe list off some tips of your own. Maybe we'll include them in a future video, but thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to everybody who subscribed, and as always, have a fantastic day.